So welcome to the uh, MicroApp Theater. Uh, this presentation shifts gears a little bit toward a design topic rather than a, a testing topic. My name is Darren McLernan. I'm the uh, product manager for uh, in marketing for, uh, for the SystemView product uh, within the Agilent EDA uh, organization. And just a, a note that uh, our organization will be changing company name from uh, uh, Agilent to Keysight on August 1st. Um, my, uh, my colleague, uh, Ding Ching Lu, uh, put this together and wanted to note uh, a few uh, specific radar system design challenges uh, to look at a, at a couple of uh, proposed solutions for them and to look a little bit at modeling not radar uh, transmit and receive so much as much as the environments that they sit in. So with uh, multi-antenna uh, beam-formed phased array uh, electronically steered uh, radar uh, systems, you have several uh, design challenges. One is that in most radar organizations, the, the uh, antenna and beam-forming people use one uh, set of uh, tools and have a methodology. The FPGA and DSP guys have another set of methodologies and tools. The RF uh, TR module guys have another set of tools, and it's very difficult. You, you're, you have a design to actually see the performance of one of these systems. It actually spans multiple domains. Uh, another challenge is that um, in, in, a, in a radar design environment, um, designing the, the, the exciter and the receiver is just part of the challenge. You also have to model the environment because you're measuring things at a distance. So having the ability to have multiple targets, mul uh, multiple transmits, multiple receives, and have them all in 3D space is another design challenge. Um, then you have uh, signal processing. Uh, there's a great variety of techniques for uh, countermeasures and just uh, electronic warfare techniques. So with jamming, countermeasures, and a complex interference scenario, you may have fairly sophisticated signaling to overcome too. So the idea of designing radars is something that takes a number of domains in order to do a reasonable job. And one of the ways you approach that is with a system level approach where you go above the levels of each of these individual domains for uh, beam forming uh, and e electromagnetic antenna design for uh, RF, uh, transmit and receive, or FPGA design, and you can take a system level approach to this. Now in, uh, in the Agilent um, system level tool, there, is, there are personalities for LT Advanced and different communications, as well as a reference library for uh, signal processing building blocks for radars. Um, one of the things that's, that's new is the ability not to do the signal processing layer, but to model more of the environment. So if you picture um, the difficulty of, of modeling an airborne uh, or something on a, on a boat or a satellite, take a satellite, you, the Doppler shifts and delays um, and the motion of these platforms are physically important to the kinds of signals that you have to process. So the ability to model where transmits uh, and receive platforms are in 3D space and in velocity space, as well as targets and uh, clutter and so forth, is, is an important inertial modeling. Um, there's also the idea of an uh, antenna uh, layer that's been added for attitude. So if I have a plane that's flying and I'm uh, I'm forming a beam, uh, my antenna's up, and I start to bank my plane, I'm now pointed in the wrong direction. And I have to do my beam forming to maintain to tracking on a target. But that target may be slightly off center, so the, the performance is a little degraded because it's just off bore sight. And the uh, link level performance, effectively, of that radar is degraded. So at the signal processing layer, these motion artifacts and beam forming artifacts, side lobes and, and different things play into the signal processing layer. 
So those are recent uh, additions to, to the, the system level design software. Down at the signal processing layer, you can in fact um, integrate um, RF and FPGA uh, targets, uh, signal processing uh, together. So there's a, a, a library, a pre-built library of about 100 of these blocks. Uh, they range from simple um, blocks such as uh, uh, a, uh, a, a target could have uh, uh, swirling models to, to fluctuate the amount of reflection versus time, all the way up to whole subsystems, uh, space-time adaptive processing, uh, beamforming, and, and, ad and adaptive uh, uh, beamforming. For example, if you look in the, you have a, uh, a jammer coming in from a certain direction, you can reform your beam to park a null in that direction and reform your beam so that you're not affected by, by that interfering source. So there are models for, for many of these subsystems. Uh, just a couple of them uh, include uh, uh, antenna models for, for things like tracking and search. If you're in uh, a tracking mode, you're either doing a raster scan or a conical scan or there's some, some pattern and your target will come up every so often and then that affects what you, the signals you see in the signal layer. Um, also, so there's, there's a lot of parameters for, for setting up some of these scenarios. Another one is the ability to define a phased array. You can uh, bring in uh, a 3D far field pattern from that you've either measured or from a, a 3D uh, software like EMPRO or uh, HFSS or CST. Bring that in as, a, as an ASCII file and then set up an array of emitters and then give that coefficients and steer that beam to look in preferential directions. So the ability to set up a matrix uh, of, um, of uh, a phased array and then uh, have it be fail in certain ways with certain percentages allows you to look at, at degraded system performance. So this is an example of um, a Doppler, a pulse Doppler system where you have some uh, near distance clutter that may come from uh, ground or some other source that's nearby and there are signal processing techniques to look at your Doppler bins and uh, which are uh, the location of a, a target that you're looking for in distance, range space and, uh, and uh, Doppler offset space and identify it more clearly. So pulse compression and, and different algorithms can be used to uh, look at that. Also in this, in this um, signal processing layer, you can set up, you can take a, a signal out of any place in this and download it to a, a, a wideband ARB and actually make that signal with test equipment or digitize a signal and bring it into this block diagram and do your more signal processing and modeling with realistic signals that you've measured from an environment. So there's an interaction with test equipment here as well. So in this, in this um, scenario, there's also the ability to bring in uh, MATLAB code, uh, M code if you have some. Uh, most, most people already have um, some amount of radar modeling already finished. You can also bring in uh, C++ and VHDL and whatever whatever IP that you have. So it's a, from that perspective, um, both RF, you know, F, S and X parameters, compressing models, phase noise, different models on the RF side, as well as the DSP, the FPGA and DSP side can be brought in. And you use some of the floating point reference models and whatever IP that you already have to render these scenarios. Um, there's actually, when this was written, this is a fairly um, simple example. Back in the booth, um, one of my colleagues has a, a little bit more elegant example. But if you go on Google Maps and look at latitude, longitude, and altitude, uh, LLA coordinate points, you can trace out uh, a trajectory for, say, a plane flying around and uh, do various experiments. I think some of the slide didn't render but uh, it has some more of the, the plots that are, that are uh, available for looking at the system level performance. Do I have an RF 
enough RF performance? Do I have the right algorithms? Can they perform in the face of certain countermeasures that are being applied to me? Um, you, can, you can look at a lot of these um, things with a, a system simulation. So again, with, with uh, the pulse is real nice. Um, uh, this, this is a, a fairly simple um, Doppler set of Doppler chirps that are going out. By the time they come back, they've been uh, faded and there's enough clutter and garbage in, this, in the system that the pulses are basically unrecognizable at that point. So with signal processing, you can come back and uh, isolate that target. And this is just a closer look at, at, uh, at eliminating some of the sources of clutter with additional signal processing for, for a moving target indicator. So who, why is this important? One of the reasons this is important is that if you have an airborne or shipborne or even satellite, uh, especially satellite system, how do you test this stuff without flying it around? Um, so if you wait until the end of a project to actually do the testing, it's expensive and a little bit risky from a project standpoint. So what you want to do is bring some of this uh, into the design environment and do it, eliminate the, the stupid stuff early. You want to really debug some of the major things. Do I have the phase noise performance? Do I have uh, the appropriate um, signal processing to be able to do the margins look right so that I have confidence when I do engage these expensive test assets that you only do it once and, and it's, it's for, for completing the project. So that taking these virtual flight tests into the R&D environment lets the R&D engineer model them uh, and, and overcome them with more confidence before you ever commit to, to real circuitry or, or ASICs or what have you. So the benefits of a, a system level approach in general are there's three main benefits and being able to go across, above the baseband RF domain means that you can um, make you know, win business with proposals better, but then also follow it through to uh, test and measurement all the way through the process to implementation and actually take the signals that you were seeing in R&D and make them really and really start testing radars. The other thing is uh, it's IP friendly. You can accept sources of IP from lots of different sources. It's not tied to one vendor. And then because a lot of these, um, it's a build it kit of lots of signal processing blocks and about 100 different examples and reference designs. You just take something that already works and just modify it a little bit and it saves a lot of time. It's especially true if I'm making this kind of radar and I'm very skilled at it, but I have to make other kinds of electronic systems in a warfare theater. I don't want to have to design all that stuff too and make a whole science fair project just to predict the performance of my thing under stress. I use the Agilent reference blocks to model some of these other non-critical pieces and con so I can concentrate on my thing. So the reference designs are, are helpful that way and it helps you put together stuff uh, a little bit faster. It saves time. So that's, that's the, um, uh, the end of the, the remarks. If there's, if there's questions, I'll take questions and then we also can show some of these concepts back in the booth if, you, if, you, if anyone's interested. There's no questions, I'll hand it back to the moderators. Thank you very much.